This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <laughs>
based on the orders and the commandments of the Creator. It means that if He will decide that you will be alive, even if you won't eat for 30 days, you'll stay alive. Like Moses that was able to climb for 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai and was not eating bread and was not drinking water. And like it's written on Elijah the prophet that he was walking for 40 days straight. 40 days walking and walking and walking and not eating and not drinking based on one meal that he ate before. He prepared himself to that journey of 40 days walk through with one meal. He sat and he ate that meal and based on the power and the energy of that food, no energy bars, regular cake he was eating, Ugat Retzafim. And he took that cake, a cake that had been burnt on, on coals, on fire, on, on, on revealed fire. And while eating that, he received some kind of power that made him able to go for 40 days straight. One piece of cake, one whole cake that he ate, fed him in energy for 40 days. No, just that Hashem gave him the power and the light to continue his journey and to complete it because Hashem wanted. So when you're eating, what is the hunger? What are those negative thoughts that you have while you're hungry, while you're tired? You're being negative and lack of faith and you are disconnected in a way from the spiritual ability, from your spiritual potential of being spiritual, of being connected to Hashem. That Hashem will have the channel and the access to plant inside of you your spiritual powers that means that you can walk for 40 days straight without eating, without drinking, without sleeping, without even thinking about tiredness, just to do your job, just to complete your mission. When you are disconnected from your spiritual connection, then you're falling to think, oh, I'm tired, oh, I'm hungry, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm weak. And then you start having physical solutions. Oh, I feel like sleep now. I feel like I'm just going to put my head for five minutes, for one hour. I have to go to sleep like I'm dead. It was enough. All those conclusions are conclusions that are coming as a result of your lack of faith. So when you are dead tired, if you will focus your mind in what that is standing in the opposite direction of where you're holding, to fix your lack of faith, you will be fed, you will receive the energy from the divine source that will create balance. If you are thinking to yourself now, hey, I'm not learning enough. Most of people that are desiring closeness to the Creator, looking for, for, for truth, for answers to their questions, are finding themselves in that problem many, many times in their lifetime. Lack of knowledge. I want to know what's going to happen. They want to understand what's going on with me. I want to find answers. And then he starts opening books. People desire information. So they're opening books, they're googling their questions, they're calling people, trying to find solutions. But when we're standing and praying Shmonaisle, when we are praying our quiet prayer, we are saying to Hashem, Ata Khonen Ladam Dat. You're the one that gives wisdom to the man, to every person. So if it's you that we're asking from you, please give us your wisdom. Give us from your wisdom, teach us. And it's written on Abraham, our, our father, that his kidneys would give him advice. It's written on, on Shimshon Agibo that he found a spring in his cheek, inside of his mouth. While he was fighting and killing the enemies, he was thirsty. So he found a spring in his cheek. He was drinking from inside. He was drinking because he was thirsty and his mind was in the purpose, in his mission. He was in the middle of a war and there was no time to look for water source and he was just thirsty. So, the Creator completed His desire and created a spring in His cheek, in His mouth. 
inside of his mouth. Suddenly there was a faucet, there was a source of water, and he drank and satisfied himself. The divine balance that can bring down to this world wonders and miracles is in the palm of our hands. Because we are just blind to recognize the potential of, of this creation. We're ignoring the real potential of this creation because that our minds are weak, because we're falling to despair, because we're falling to make and to compromise with weak, weak excuses for the real deep questions of our being. 200 years ago, 500 years ago, if you would tell someone that you just need to speak to your mother that she's in a different land or time zone or state and you would just take out a plastic device and start talking to it, they would kill you. It was not an option that you will finish that conversation smoothly and walk away with your iPhone, right? They would kill you. Why? Because it was not accepted. It was not something that speak to the people, to their mind. It was not an option. Why today it's an option? How can it be an option that you today will storage your information in the cloud? Like, how can it be that all your pictures and videos and ancient emails are all in the cloud? Like, where in the world is that cloud? Like, I want an access to that cloud. Oh, it is. What's your password? No problem. No, it's not exist. It's not logic. It's not the wisdom of those people that made that cloud. No. They themselves were in such a shock when they realized that suddenly they found that cloud. It was not their invention. It wasn't something that they made. There is a spirit behind the screen. And every computer programmer will tell you that he's playing in a different zone when he's over there programming. There is a spirit over there that is creating those things for those programmers. And they're revealing their way when that way is being carved for them. Being illustrated and painted for them. It's like an artist when he's coming to carve that, that amazing, um, um, how you say, pestle, sculpture. It's already inside the stone. It's just hidden over there. And he's just peeling one layer after the next until he finds what that he desired. But that figure, step, how? Sculpture. Sculpture. He was already there for thousands of years, waiting and hidden, and waiting for that moment that someone will peel the rest of, 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 of the stone that was blocking his shape and his figure. And he was there before you came. You haven't made that figure. It was there. It was waiting. And you receive that merit from heaven to be that one that will reveal the nature of that stone or part of the nature of that stone. Maybe in 200 years, someone will take the head off of that sculpture. Oh. Yes, I made it. <laughs> like, I'm learning English. Like, someone asked us today, someone sent an email or it was a, a YouTube comment. He said, can you give us some proofs, evidence for the fact that Hashem exists and like, uh, like you need evidence. If, if you would know what I went through in life and now I'm standing here and like you're listening to me, like it's crazy. You, don't, you won't believe it, like how powerful and great and weird that miracle is. Like it, there is no way in the world that I was supposed to be in this place unless Hashem wanted it to be. Like the real creator, the one that can create a pomegranate. For an example, a friend of mine, friend, he was my friend once, and like something like 200 years ago, and, and he went on a trip to India, and it was Rosh Hashanah. And in Rosh Hashanah, first day of the year, Jewish people are like, they are opening the pomegranate. And while they open that pomegranate in India, one of the people asked the question, when we're eating the pomegranate in Rosh Hashanah, we're, we're mentioning the fact 
that that we will be full with mitzvot, with the, like that we're gonna fulfill our obligation like the pomegranate. So someone asked, okay, so why why the pomegranate? Why not to say like a mandarin, like an apple? What the reason the pomegranate? Someone like innocent asked. So that ex friend of mine answered. Because that in the pomegranate there are 613 grains. Seeds. Seeds, sorry. And he said, I'm learning, I'm with you. <laughs> seeds. And he said, there are 613 seeds in the pomegranate, and it's an equal number to the number of obligations of Tariyag mitzvot that we have in the Torah, 613. It took three minutes and that pomegranate was in the hands of five or six people and everyone is counting. And he realized like the mistake that he made, like I just opened my mouth and he said that there are going to be 613 seeds in that pomegranate, like and I don't know that. <laughs> and they just start counting and counting and counting and counting and counting and they found 614 seeds in that pomegranate and one of them was brown and, and, and rotten, it was dead. There were 613 seeds in that pomegranate and it, you don't need more wonders than those that we see in our lives. That you have hundreds of questions and you're coming to a class and suddenly the rabbi, the person that is talking, is answering all your questions. Like, how can that be? How in the world is it happening? And every time that he's opening his mouth, he's answering all your questions. How can it be? That's the evidence that there is a Creator. Now, what the problem with that? That we're always choosing the easier way. We're choosing to drop the faith. Why? Because the faith is in the nights it's easier to receive energy from sweets. It's easier to throw yourself to bed and to say it will give me power to deal with my problems tomorrow. It's easier to drop your problems and to push them for tomorrow. But really the sleep doesn't make you a better person tomorrow. It doesn't give you the energy that you needed. You're waking up exactly in the same way that you went to sleep. Like, if you went to sleep tired, you're waking up tired in the morning. If you went to sleep fresh, you wake up fresh. For you, when you go to sleep, do you feel the 6 hours or the 8 hours or the 14 hours, in your case, when you're going to sleep? No. You just close your eyes and then you wake up. And on the watch, on your alarm clock, it looks like you slept for 8 hours. People out there will tell you 8 hours passed, but for you, in the moment that you closed your eyes and you disappeared from this dimension, that was the moment that you opened your eyes. Maybe now you woke up with some memories of adventures that you went through in your dreams or whatever, but really nothing took time. For you, in the moment that you fell asleep, that was the moment that you woke up. You have not experienced that sleep. It was something else that happened to you. One of my children had a dream a few days ago and he dreamt like a whole movie, like three hours adventure in, in, in his dream. From this animal to that animal and in that house and moved to another area and he met him and that and like whatever. And in the end, he saw a lion and that lion was running toward him. And right when the lion was about to catch him, to touch him, he woke up. So it was great. And I explained to him a few things about the dream and he was very satisfied. But then he said, but you know, my real problem with that dream was that the lion was real. So I told him, when you were in the dream, you lived in that dream in reality. It was your reality when you were there. For you that dream could take 70 years. But in this world it was not exist at all. It was not in the, in the scale of time. It was not in, in, in time zone at all. It just like it happened in a moment. Our reality in this world is compared to a dream in the world to come. 
You think that you are here for 70 years, for 80 years, for 120 years. That's what you dream. That's what you think. That every situation is so critical and that you are dead tired now and you have to put your head and that you are starving and you must eat. You're taking life too seriously. But in reality, nothing will happen to you if you're going to skip that meal, if you're not going to sleep that night. Nothing will happen to you. You're going to run like the same donkey that you ran yesterday, the same way you're going to run tomorrow. On the same empty batteries, you're going to function. For If you don't have a choice, you're running. If Hashem tells you to run for 40 days and 40 nights, you're running. I'm telling you, if people went through and survived the Holocaust, if people lived for one year and a half in Auschwitz, in the camps. So everything is possible. There is nothing that cannot be done because food was not available over there and sleep was not available over there and fresh water was not available over there and no needs of basic needs of human beings there was no reason to live over there there was no happiness over there no joys no relatives no family no shabbatot no holidays there was nothing over there except of sorrow and suffering and every good reason to take your life in your hands and to die but people survived. Why people survived? Because Hashem decreed on those people to survive. Think about your life. Think about the miracle of your life. Who are you? You look at the mirror today and you think to yourself, okay, that's me, that's my face, I remember, that's my age, I remember, those are my life experience, I remember, that's my name, those are my colors. That's what you think. But in reality, can you imagine to yourself what took place in this world to bring you to that moment that you will stand in front of the mirror and gonna look and recognize yourself? Think about earlier generations. Think about your life experiences that have not started in this lifetime. Think about the seed that passed in your family from one generation to the next on the holy roots of your soul that went from one person to the next, from one parent's couple of parents to the next generation, having children. And then in their village, there was a huge fire. And we're talking about 5,000 years ago. And only 300 families from 600 families escaped from that fire. Okay, so now half of the odds that you will make it out of that fire went to their side and you survived. Amazing. And then you, that family branch of yours, they settled a new village and they sat over there and they were happy. And after 200 years, there was a huge war. And enemies came from the, another country, from another foreign land and start slaughtering them and killing them and raping them and destroying them and burning their cabins and their houses. And maybe 100 families survived. And your family was one of those 100 families that survived. And you went through with your family with your holy ancestors that survived the floods and survived the rains and the fires and the wars and the plagues and the holocaust and whatever that you went through as a soul inside that channel of your family until that you reach today standing in front of the mirror and you don't recognize the miracle that is you that you are 100% of a miracle standing alive, being able to breathe and to eat and to think and to focus and to concentrate and to work and to function. Because it's not obvious at all that you would survive and even just this lifetime. And especially when this lifetime is only the sherry on the top of the cream, on the top of the 15th floor of that gigantic cake of the generations. Who you are is not who you see in the mirror. Who you are is the story of the creation of this world. And your soul is more ancient than time. Because when the Creator chose 
your soul to come down to this world, he saw through time. And he saw exactly which will be those souls that will pass through all the generations until the last one when the real Mashiach will reveal himself and will open the eyes of the truth seekers and will teach them the truth and will teach them the right guidings, the right advice, how really to connect to who they are. Because what that happened in this world in the act of creation was that the Creator set a wall of separation between the truth of who we are in the source, in the nature of our souls to the bodies that we've been dressed in as human beings. And that forgetfulness, that power of illusion is just blocking the eyes of those souls from remembering who they really are in the secret of their creation, in the purpose and mission of their creation in this lifetime. When Mashiach will come, He will remove that curtain and He will open the eyes of the truth seekers, of those ones that are desiring the truth, to recognize who they really are. And then they won't be hungry anymore. And then they won't be angry anymore. And they won't be tired anymore. And they won't suffer anymore. And they'll be happy. And they'll be satisfied. And they will go and spread peace and faith and trust and loyalty. And all good attributes in the world. Because they themselves will become who they really are. They won't block and shade who they really are. And they will see and recognize who they really are. And they will go and spread that light between all of their people, all of their beloved ones. And the light will spread and will wash the universe. And people will be glad and happy and satisfied. And that is that divine peace and that's the completion of the world. And it's not so far. Why it's not so far? Because it's It's in your mouth, it's in your heart. You can do it. You should do it. For you to do it, you should connect yourself to that first explanation that I gave you about the holy chariot of the of Hashem. That you will become that holy chariot of the divine light that it's already you. You don't need to change to become your true self. You just need to remove all those things that are shading on your true being, on who you are. In the moment that you will observe, in the moment that you will look deep into your own eyes, you're going to look deep into yourself to recognize your true self. You in that moment will see wonders. In that moment you will recognize the truth about yourself and you're going to remember all your lifetimes. And you're going to remember all the ancient knowledge that is installed in your skull, in your brain from the ancient archives of heaven. And you will know who you are in the secret of, the, of your soul, in the completion and, uh, and in the mission of your, of your soul, in your destiny, in your purpose. And you're going to understand exactly why you're scared from those kind of people and why those situations are terrifying you and why you can't deal with that kind of relationship and why you're so hurt from those people and why those things traumatize you when you're a child. And all those doubts and all those questions suddenly will be solved in a second that you will be brave enough to look into the truth of who you are. Now those are not slogans, those are not empty words. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart to do. The way to do that is to decide that you want to do that. Because there is nothing that can stop you when you want something. When you give up on your will, when you let yourself fall to your sadness, to your foreign thoughts of despair, of tiredness, of of sadness, then you yourself with 
through that power of imagination, you're dropping the free choice and you choose to follow those negative advice of being sad and depressed and broken. But when you decide not to surrender to the darkness that is surrounding you and you choose life, you say to yourself, I want to live. I want to find my true self. I want to find my soul. I want to feel good with myself. I don't, know when it, well, don't want to be scared from people. I don't want to be angry on my beloved ones. I don't want to be jealous. I want to be pure. I want to be holy. I want to be strong. I want to find my inner power. In that moment, you will feel your senses will wake up to recognize the godliness of your soul. Because your soul is part of heaven from above. You are chelek eloka mimal. You are part of Hashem. And you cannot set Hashem to parts. But Hashem told you, I'm sending my light into your bodies. Betoch ami anochi yoshavet. Inside of my people, I live. Vasuli mikdash veshachanti betocham. Set an inner holy place inside of yourselves. And I'm going to live inside of you. Hashem is saying, the creator of the universe. When the Mikubalim are saying that when you walk, you can read that in many books that are explaining how to have the right combinations of letters while walking in the streets. There are books that are describing the way that the person should walk. So when a person is walking and there's a man walking in front of him, so you need to have that intention of seeing that man, that person, as the Yud Kei Vav Kei, as the holy name of Hashem that is written in Yud and in the letter He, and then the letter Vav, and then the letter He, the holy name that we're not allowed to pronounce, that we're not allowed to mention, just allowed to think and to read in our mind, but never to say yet, until Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt. So when a man is walking, you need to aim in that name in your mind, and when a woman is walking in front of you in the street, you need to, name, to aim in your mind with the four letters of the name Adni, Aleph, and Dalet, and Nun, and Yud, like that we're pronouncing the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. From that you see that a man and a woman together are a completion of the idea, the concept of the Creator, and your attachment to it, and your way to receive it, to pronounce it, to say it. And that's the way. So now, amazing thing. That person for me, supposed to be Yud Kei Vav Kei. He's the name of Hashem. That woman for me, she is Adni. Aleph Dalet Nun Yud. She is the name of Hashem. So why am I so broken in my own eyes? Why he is an angel and she is higher than him? Why he is so divine and she is probably even more? Why I cannot see myself as Yud K Vav K and why I cannot see myself as Aleph Dalit Nun Yud? Why when I'm looking at other people I can aim to myself, I can imagine to myself that they are holy people. Oh look at him, oh look at that. You're looking at me, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself that I'm special. I'm telling you I'm a joke. My wife will testify. I'm a joke. I'm a clown. I'm telling you, my kids. Yosef, am I a clown? Right? I'm a clown? You know, it's a late son. No? <laughs> Say yes. Listen to your father. <laughs> He doesn't want to say that on his father. But it's the truth. He don't want to say that. But I'm a joke. I'm a joke. Why do you think that I'm different? Because I'll tell you why. A person asked me yesterday, I met with a wonderful person, and he asked me a question. He told me, what changed you? What was the moment of your change? Because he came to my house, and he sat on my table, and he told me, you know, I saw that, that living room from your videos. I feel so inspired to be in your house. I told him, it's a house, come in. It's a regular house, really. We live in a regular house. It's, like, it's a house. 
And he came and he said, and he was talking to me with so much respect, and Hashem really helped me to give him, to provide some good answers to him. And he was all fascinated and happy and excited. And then he asked me that deep question, what changed you? What was that moment? So I told him, listen, I lived in such darkness before I woke up to life. That for me, the Creator's existence was not real at all. I couldn't see His light. I lived my life like an animal. Not a bad animal. But in reality, when I was hungry, I was eating. When I was angry, I was screaming. I was fighting. When I was... I was reacting to my physical needs and also maybe emotional. But I was just... Who that I was in that moment with my feelings, with my needs, with my thoughts, and without the understanding of a spiritual spirit, of a divine creator that is supervising on my reality. He was not there in my eyes, in my awareness at all. And one day it hit me. I was a soldier. It's not a heroic story, but while I was a soldier, in the army, I met new friends, the environment was very different than my f the earlier life, and I was just talking more to new people, and I was able, I was a little bit more free from my, my thoughts and my patterns and my friends and, and, and my family. I was a little bit more able to be myself. I felt more comfortable to think and to give option to other people's opinions, and I was not like trapped in showing off and, 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 and pretending to be someone. I was free from, from those nonsense in that period of time in my life. And those people offered me, while we were talking, those surroundings were offering me to believe that there is a Creator. Because they were more religious than me. And they were keeping some of mitzvot that I was not even aware to their existence at all. I didn't talk about those things. And while I was giving an option to their opinion, suddenly I start realizing that spiritual, unique and special things are taking place in my life. Like I was walking with certain, certain thoughts in my mind and while I was thinking on those concepts, a friend could come over me, toward, toward me and start answering my questions. And I was able to hear those combinations, those coincidences, so to speak. I was able to recognize the divine hand of supervision on my life. That when I'm thinking about something, that thing is coming into my life, also dressed in figures, in bodies, in people. That's the way that you can recognize that that person deserved the name Yud K Vav K on his head. And that woman deserved to be called in the name of Adni above her, her head. Why? Because the Creator is really dressing us all as coverings. And the whole world is full with His respect, with His coverings, with His outfits. And He is dressing all of us. And when I realized that, when I saw that really there is a spirit behind the curtain of life. There is a life form, some existence that is thinking for us. That is talking to me from within. In my thoughts, he is talking to me. In the speeches of my friends, he's communicating with me. From the books that I'm reading, here the letters are coming and hitting my awareness and making me wiser. And I'm progressing and I'm learning. So there is a purpose for that spirit that is surrounding me and reviving me and giving me life from within. And I realize that there is a Creator. That there is someone that makes all those things happen. And that He's making all this catastrophe that we call life a real harmony. And something unique is coming out from the chaos that we live in. And when I realized that, from the complete darkness that I lived in one moment before, it hit me like a thunder in a, in a bright day. It just like woke me up completely from my illusion and my dream while I was a daydreamer. And I woke up in such a strong way that I took a decision that I'm 
not going to move an inch, a millimeter from my decision of committing myself to that divine power. And I haven't moved an inch back from that decision 20 years ago. And I just went forward and forward and I just progressed. And I haven't went. My wife told me something like six, seven years ago. She said, we are Baalei Tshuva for then it was something like 15 years, like 14, 13 years. And she said, and you still have not became religious. Like we're Baalei Tshuva, we're observant, we're keeping to our mitzvot, but you are not religious. And I'm still not religious. Like I am not a religious person. You can think I'm religious, but in reality, I'm not religious at all. I'm such a free person. I'm free in my mind. I am free in my spirit. I can make the same video of shooting for you when I'm, when I'm saying the keynote in Tisha B'Av with my children and to give you the deepest explanation that I can come up with from the keynote, from the songs that we're singing and I can make the same movie while walking with my wife in Target in the middle of the night, having fun and celebrating and looking for deals for our kids. Really? They have a very good clearance department for me in Target. <laughs> Yeah, we are connected to reality. We live our life. I'm serving Hashem because I believe in Him, not because I must. I don't owe nothing to no one. I'm not in a, an obligation. You can think maybe you are. No, it's your mind that is obligating me and obligating you. Me, my name is Dog. Dog is a sparrow. I'm free. You don't know how free I am. That's me. I'm free. I'm doing it because I choose to do that. I'm keeping Shabbat because I want to keep Shabbat. And when I want to keep Shabbat, if I'm not keeping Shabbat, I'm crying. I'm crying because my passion and my desire to keep Shabbat is coming from such an honest place that I love Shabbat. And that's why I'm eating kosher. Not because I'm disgusted from pork and from shrimps and from all the other poor animals that are being served in, 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 in all those foreign places. It's delicious. Like, if you haven't ate that, I'm telling you, I ate them all. I haven't left one of them that I didn't taste before I did tshuva. I'm not eating it because I want to eat kosher. Not because it's disgusting. Not because it's not kosher. Because I realized that Hashem told us good advice. Like the Zohar Kadosh is calling the mitzvot, itin tavin, good advice. It's more healthy to eat kosher. It's better for you, for your mind, for your aura, for your soul, for your spirit to eat kosher food. And also in that, there are ways to understand what is the real will of Hashem from you. Also in the kosher world, also in the Shabbat aspect, also in the holidays, also in being religious and choosing to be from or whatever you want, how you want to call yourself. I'm doing my thing out of my love to Hashem. Out of the fact that I realize that He exists. And I realize that He chose me to reveal His light to me. And He opened my eyes from complete darkness. Not because I was worthy. I was not worthy. Because I was not keeping Shabbat and I was not eating kosher and I was dating with whoever I wanted to date and I was driving my bike and I had a Jeep and I was breaking Shabbat and I was clubbing and taking drugs in, in discotheques and clubs. Discotheques, it was 25 years ago. It, like there are no discotheques anymore in the world, but only in my mind. So I, I, like I was clubbing, I was taking drugs. I was violating every command that was offered to me. I was lying and I was cheating and I was making up excuses and I would avoid any kind of responsibility and I made piercing and I made tattoos and I, I, and I ate everything that crawled to my plate. And in reality, Hashem opened my eyes in those days when I was impure, from in all contaminations that exist in the world. And I invited them, I called them on myself. I was making seance, uh, seance, how is in English? Seance. And I was, I was doing everything. Everything that I could just think of. 
And then in that moment, in that dark hours or period time of my life, Hashem chose to open the curtain and to smile to me. Hi, I'm here. So that's why I'm not unique. That's why I'm not special. Even if for you it's easier to say, Oh, look, he's so special. You know why you're saying that I'm special? Because you are finding it hard to recognize how special you are. It's easier for you to say, Oh, he's special. I'm no, I'm a messed up case. Like, no, I'm, I'm a fruit case. I'm, there's no way for me to snap. No, I'm dead. I'm beat. Evil inclination killed me. No, me, you don't know what I went through. What that you went through is a joke. No matter what you went through, I'll tell you stories of other people that compared to their stories, you will jump from joy. You'll be so happy that you've been destroyed in the way that you've been destroyed because there are people that suffered so much more than you. Even if you've been destroyed, there are people that suffered more. And I heard thousands of stories because I have thousands of friends and students that are emailing me and texting me horrific stories from the darkness of this world. Dark stories, horrible stories, frightening situations. We should all be happy. We should all work so hard to recognize that spark that the Creator found that spark Precious enough to make that spark cross the generations, the fires, and the floods, and the plagues, and the destructions, and the wars, and the attacks, and all the horrible storms that took place in your ancient locations as different life forms, as different in different lifetimes as different souls installed inside of different people that today are being called your ancestors, but you were part of their soul back then. You are part of something much bigger than you recognize today with your physical eyes. But when you drop those physical eyes and you start looking inside, deep, into the roots of your soul, of who you really are within, not who you want to be, who you dream to be, who you hope to be, who you believe that you can become. No, who you are now. What are you doing here? Why are you listening to this cuckoo? Why? Why? What brought you to this situation in your life? If you will recognize the reason why you are now watching this class or that video, you'll understand that you are a holy angel that is swimming against the stream of negative thoughts and fighting for your life and trying to make a living, to make life, spiritual living, I mean, and trying to survive. And not only that, you're sharing those videos and you're helping other people with the advice and with the knowledge that you purchase and that you buy from all the teachings and from all the wisdom that you're learning. I'm telling you, take that advice. In every negative situation, every time that you find yourself too attached to physicality, think about the opposite side. And those are your abilities. This is your true potential. You're hungry, remind yourself that you can live without food. You're sad, remind yourself on the good reasons why you should be happy. You're tired, remind yourself bring down that holy triangle from heaven that will complete that amazing triangle of earth and bring that shield of David, this star of David, to shine upon you, to remind you who you are. Because you're not only earthen, you're not only physical. You're your soul, and your soul is dressed in physicality. And who you really are is your divine connection to your true source, to who you are. And when you will want that and you're going to desire, that desire, that holy will, will pull that shield upon you. Will bring that spiritual ability to be part of your weapon. It will be your armor. You will walk with that light.
You will shine the light of your soul, the light that's been installed by the Creator inside of you. You will be attached and connected to the purpose of your life, and you will go and you will complete it. Thank you. Enough is enough, right? <laughs> enough is enough. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.